No knock on by Melbourne. And they worked it away from inside their own 20 with 11 and a half minutes remaining. And this crowd at fever pitch at Amy Park as Veya takes it up towards the 30. Here's Smith going across to Norrie. The supporting cast has been tremendous throughout 2011 for the big three. And they need them now at any time in the past. Here is Slater going across to champion. The plan for Smith will come down the short side. Slater grabbed there by Johnson. Not tackled though. Now it goes to Ritter. Here's Hinchcliffe. Fending away from Maloney. Trying to duck under the tackle there of Inu. And wrap him up at the halfway line. Hinchcliffe feeds it back. Cameron Smith it is who does the kicking this time. Will keep it in play. Lock. A little parry off the hand. And he wind it up. And a good chase from Melbourne. They've still got plenty of energy. And now Bo Champion comes from the field. He's got a calf muscle problem by the looks of things. And you would say his night is done. The force a reshuffle. It looks as though Kevin Proctor is going to play at right centre for the Melbourne Storm. Melbourne down to their last change. The Warriors with two up their sleeve for the final 10 minutes, which is where we go now. Here's Mateo. He plays it just in his own side of halfway. Here are mine. Looking it back into Melbourne territory. I'll have one last tackle right here. Johnson feeds it for Maloney. What a second half. This has been Anthony Quinn. Boy, somehow stopped himself from putting a hand on that ball and knocking it off. Oh, what was he doing trying to stop it with his hands anyhow? He should have tried to stop it with his feet. Oh, what? Craig Bellamy in the coaching box would have been having a heart attack. But the Warriors are off their line. The line speed tonight from the Warriors has been exceptional. It's Groundhog Day for the Melbourne Storm. Working it away from their own try line. They need something special. Now Manu taking it to the halfway line. It was the Warriors who came from behind to snatch a game at the death against the Tigers last week. They are hanging on at the moment. The two-point lead. The same scenario, but the roles are reversed. The Warriors... Just with their nose in front, still at 14 points to 12. Eight and a half minutes remaining, and still Melbourne can't get a mistake. The mistake they need from the Warriors at this end of the field. And again, they continue to kick, try and kick deep, but they're finding the back three of the New Zealand team. There's space in behind the line if they want to roll the dice, Melbourne. A chip over the top for Billy Slater. Smith making back-to-back -back tackles, important ones as well. And he certainly plays above his weight, doesn't he? The tackle he made on Butterway to shut him down immediately was terrific. Now Johnson hooking it back across his body towards Duffy, who had to play at it. Didn't want to take the chance it would sit down in the in-goal area. He brings it back out towards the 20. Wouldn't they love a penalty here, Melbourne? They've only received one all night compared to the Warriors four. That's a good tough run. They need to get a bit of width in their play. They're going to worry the Warriors. Here's Vayan. It's a short ball there from Smith. He does the hard yards. One off the rough and he plays it just inside the 40. Now Wuno out the back for Witter. Searching, looking, giving a ball as a touch by the Warriors. We'll wait and see what Matt Jenkins well, says. First one, yes, Warriors. First one it Warriors. was off the Warriors. And here's the mistake. The field position that Melbourne have been searching for. It's been a long time since Melbourne had this sort of field position to start a set of six from. And here is Cameron Smith. He plays it just outside the Warriors 40. Wolno working it forward. What defence by the Warriors, but Wolno slipped the pass. Smith gives it off to Norrie. And here they are, a bit of second phase play inside the Warriors 30 on play number two. Smith comes across the crop. 
Proctor at the back. Slater to Duffy, who showed good hands. The pass was behind him, and as a result, he had to reach behind and stop on his run, and Madalino cleans him up. Thayer feeds it for Croc. Here is Wulno working it towards the uprights. They've got two plays left. Slater and Cronk to the right-hand side. Smith goes back to the left-hand side, though. Now they're set. What can they conjure? Last play. It comes to Cronk, who will kick. Some pressure on Vatu Vey. Duffy taps it backwards. It's there for Cooper Cronk. He gives it to Slater. The Warriors keep a straight line. Slater kicks. Locke will watch it. And the Warriors hang. Well, that was the right play to try and get Duffy on a one-on-one -on -one situation. With Manu, he knocked it back, but the scramble from the Warriors was there. They've been outstanding in the second half. The New Zealand Warriors. They're playing a controlled game, and defensively, they've been great. Here's Rapira. Hinchcliffe was looking for a big shot. Skated past his right shoulder. They'll play it. On play number five, Maloney taking it to the line. Bouncing away from the tackle there of Hinchcliffe. Fast play the ball. It's the last. It comes to Johnson. He will kick once again. In behind Slater and Duffy. Slater has to play at it. They've got him pegged. Duffy will be run over the sideline. The ball goes back into the end goal there. And Melbourne go within a whisker of being bundled out of the race for the 2011 Premiership. Wow. What was going through their mind here? Billy Slater wanted it to go dead. He picked it up. Back to Duffy, who then threw it back into the field of play. And it was the hand of Cooper Cronk, I think, that forced it dead. Wow. Here they come again. Just on four minutes remaining. Could it be the Sea Eagles against the Warriors? Next Sunday night at ANZ Stadium. Jeremiah going to the right-hand side. Maloney giving it to Mannering. Going all but. Still going is Mannering. He'll get to the line. They stop him. Half a metre short. He'll play it. Lock from dummy half. Searching for a playmaker. He finds one in Johnson. He shows it, shows it, shows it again. He gives it to Brown. Gives it to Brown. And is it the Warriors' night? Yeah. Is it the Warriors? Going to Homebush to take on the Sea Eagles. What a play. Outstanding. Sean Johnson compared to the great Benji Marshall going across the field showing dummies getting to the outside and putting Lewis Brown over in the corner and now Maloney from the sideline it's on its way get ready Manly the Warriors are coming to meet you next Sunday what a pressure goal from James Maloney. He's been outstanding tonight. Here's the short restart by Cameron Smith. Vaduve flies for it, knocks it backwards to Matteo. And the run of victories by the Warriors in big games over the Melbourne Storm. Here in Melbourne continues back in 2008. They became the first eighth place team to beat the minor premiers. When they beat Melbourne, they shocked Melbourne. And they have done it here again tonight. And Ivan Cleary, always a stoic figure in the coach's box, must be working hard to contain his emotions at the moment. They work it back down the field. Matteo. 30-point losers in week one to the Brisbane Broncos as the sixth-place team. But in the McIntyre system, they survived when the top four all won.
Here they go. Johnson again running it away from Melbourne. He'll kick it out of play. It doesn't matter now because it's the Warriors who will head home to a hero's reception and then return to Australia to play for everything against the Sea Eagles. Well, what a performance. Congratulations, Ivan Cleary. I mean, this team was smashed in week one and they have responded in the best possible fashion. And look at them celebrate. Well deserved. There will be no sequel to the Battle of Brookvale between Manly and Melbourne. The Warriors.